yep, whenever you see my box of junk, you know it's time for making assemblages. Now, I invited five other artists to join me to create something unique out of recycled materials. So this will be a video event, and like always, all the links to everybody's creations will be below in my box, but more about this later on. First to my junk here. I like to collect all kinds of things, often kids' toys, a special construction toy pieces, even broken toys. But I also include here household items like bottle tops. I have interesting packaging, even small bottles, even a salt shaker. Now today I will be mostly using the smaller items from this stash, but some things I will include is a wooden block, this little black plastic gate and I also found this very interesting shape here. It comes from a kitty craft where the kids weave plastic bands around it. So I have a few of those and the size is perfect for today's project. And now in this box I keep mostly the things other people would regard as trash. But the more interesting junk pieces I organize in these tackle boxes. These are filled with broken jewelry like chains and necklaces, bracelets, earrings, brooches, you name it. I also keep other interesting metal pieces in here like gears and hands from clocks, handyman items, rings and so on. Now at the bottom of this pile is a box full of game markers and again I just keep them in here because they're small and otherwise get lost. So today I will be using up a lot of this stash as it's been here way too long and the only reason I keep it is so I can use it in my art. By the way, I don't find all this stuff laying around my house. I have to actively go out and look for it and of course friends and family give me stuff as well as I know that I can use it. So aside from all those things, I will be using simple buttons, beads and eyelets as they are perfect to fill in small spaces. Basis. Now, I hope that this overview shows what type of recycled items can be used in assemblages. All right, next I'm doing a little backtracking because my footage starts a wee bit into my project. Here I'm using simple drywall tape to create a nice texture by overlaying some of the pieces. And that's exactly what I did when I started working in another one of those kids toy trays. The smaller compartment has a drywall tape for a background texture. I also added the wood piece in it and here in the bigger part you can see two of those plastic gadgets I showed you earlier and now everything gets covered in a layer of gesso to start with. Next, another piece of junk. This is a flexible piece of molding. So I cut away the broken part, so I'm left with the center piece. From here on, I will be adding captions, so I'm a little more free to talk to you about this collaboration. There is really not a whole lot to explain. It's all pretty simple, but we do have a few little guidelines we will all follow. First, our materials are for the most part recycled things. Second, we will also add one or two movable parts to our projects. And third, we will add the word recycle somewhere. It can be small or it can be bold. So a lot of the choices are left up to the artist. There are of course so many different type of assemblages and anything goes. Now at the time when I'm doing this voiceover, I have not seen any of the the other projects so I'm super excited and I look forward to see what everybody came up with. So like I mentioned earlier there will be links below and please don't miss this opportunity to take a look at some interesting and unique pieces of art. All right now back to my piece here as you saw I prepared the box here for my little pieces by marking out some areas I don't want to cover and now it's time to glue and here it is done. I added a bottle top to the 
small compartment over here on the side and then the rest is filled with mostly jewelry pieces and here you get a close-up look now i purposely did not include the process of gluing first of all it's a bit boring and time consuming seconds the final outcome depends so much on what type of pieces you have handy mainly i arrange them in a way that the shapes complement each other here i'm pointing out some of my animal brushes so i ended up with a fish an elephant a cat a butterfly a dog a buffalo a little bird so quite a zoo in here and next i'm adding another layer of gesso or two to cover everything really well and I will be using a smaller brush so I can get into all the nooks and crannies. So here everything is done. I covered the inside and the outside of the tray. It's dry and ready for some paint. Now I do like to paint my assemblages. Not all of them but many of them because for the most part I use tiny things, small bits and pieces, things which do not have a significant shape or form or don't draw the attention enough on their own so the paint will bring it all together now of course there are so many different ways of creating assemblages and often with bigger pieces which are beautiful or have a unique characteristic which draws attention paint is absolutely not needed now today I will do both paint and no paint and you will see what I mean in just a wee bit so back to my piece here. I'm pointing out that I added some drywall tape to the square. I also extended the black area towards the wooden block. Again, I did it off camera as I know you know how to paint. On to a couple more pieces I want to add. You saw the heart earlier and I am adding a little Lego flower to it. I also have this little plastic arrow which I'm adding as an afterthought so it can point to the heart. Both pieces will get gesso and the same paint I used earlier and I also screw back in the little frame hanger. And next I want to alter this piece of molding a bit more by adding glossy accents, some micro beads and also some paint. Now this is a nice piece and I will use it just the way it is uh, but I did want to replace that really gaudy piece of bling and I think this will look more like what I'm looking for. Now earlier you might have seen three painted frames here on the side of my desk. I ended up only using one which I painted painted gold on the inside and black on the outside. I will be adding this toy piece as a gate by adding simple wire to create hinges. Now this slipped off the screen a little bit but I think you get the idea. Now the hinges are loose enough where the little gate opens and shuts easily. I did have to touch up the scratches I made in the process and then went on to use the black on my big piece as well. A dry brush, very little paint just to bring out the texture some more. Now I often use metallic paints for this purpose but in this case the uh, flat black seemed the best choice. Now I'm not super big on planning and looking ahead in my art pieces but I find that for assemblages especially the ones that have bigger pieces to include I need to do so in order to leave space and so that my idea and my vision will work. So here is a close look at the shading. Before I add my word, I wrote it on a simple piece of paper, cut it to the right shape and it will fit in the empty space right there on top over a tiny magnet. And next I am adding some E6000 to hold my bigger pieces. First the little molding goes right there on top and now for my focal piece. Isn't this cool. A dear friend of mine gave it to me and you can tell that it had been used on another decoration piece before. It is made out of stone. It is rather heavy. It has that same red coloration. It has some gold on it and some really cool detailing. 
Now, of course, I have no idea if this is a special artifact or it's made in China. But either way, it is a treasure to me. Next, I have a broken wing. This piece was most likely part of a figurine. It is also made out of a stone. It has detailed carvings and it fits perfectly under this picture frame. Now the frame came with a little design, so I am adding some gold rub and buff to bring it out. I also added a very small gold metal circle for a doorknob. And for the last step, I just have to insert the heart. So let's take another closer look at my completed piece here. Now the outside is pretty simple, just black paint on the sides. I did add a piece of craft paper to the very back in a matching color. Otherwise, I added a bit more of the rub and buff to the texture here on top and also to the gate itself. Another thing I added a bit earlier was a magnet underneath this heart. That way it stays put really well. And yeah, as you can see, it doesn't go anywhere. Now, of course, the little gate as well as the heart are my two movable parts. And my word is hidden, but rather easy to find. Now I ended up with two areas of special interest. The pieces I did not color over because I really didn't need it, but also the pieces that tell a story together, or so I hope. I was, of course, after something mystical and mysterious, and a story comes to mind, but you can probably think of a great version as well, so I leave that part to you. I really hope that you enjoyed your time with me today, and maybe, just maybe, it inspired you to do some recycling for art's sake. <laughs> and please follow the links here in my description box to all the other videos. I just know that you will enjoy everyone's projects as I handpicked a very talented group of people. So that's it for me today. I see you really soon again. Bye bye for now.